Cheers, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode with audio this time of Vivian's Drag Race Season 13 recap for episode 2. Anyway, it's me, your best news of SD, Vivian Frost, back. So let's just, you know, last week I had everything, so it, it went so well. Believe me, I said I dropped some major bombs, the, uh, verbal bombs, last episode, but you just couldn't hear it. So hopefully, yep, check, check, quadruple checking, got audio. Good to go, and I'm recording, because I already did have this episode without fucking recording it. So I got the glitch out of the way for the night. Let's rock in. Drag? I don't fucking know. Anyway, uh, the girls this week had the, well, the, you know, the pork chop room this week, or the pork chop team, whatever you want to fucking call them, this week had to do pretty much the same challenge the girls last week had to do, the winners group had to do. Uh, different themes and everything, however, the results were quite nice. Uh, starting off with a Sorry. <laughs> I mirrored my fucking video, so now it's like exact, like a mirror, like a legit mirror uh, as I'm watching it over here, which is why I'm not staring at the camera sometimes. Like that. Anyway, Denali, one of my quick favorites already for the season. The more I see of her, the more I like her. And I know there's another queen that's right here with her for me on in terms of this group. Uh, she came out, great little number. She does a great job of wearing the outfits and not letting them wear her. Uh, you hear that a lot, and I'm just kind of regurgitating it, but I understand what it means, so it makes sense to me, especially for her. So, and then we have Joey J coming out, rocking the all-natural hair. Remember, this is the first. Um, cute little outfit, not the best on the runway for sure. And then we have Rosé, my second favorite uh, in terms of the pork chop group uh, so far. And the same thing as with Denali, the more I see of her, the more I, I like her a lot. I like her a lot. Anyway, uh, so Rose, great, cute little outfit, very kind of, you know, old school comic book, zoomed in, pop art kind of thing. And then we have the queen of vintage elegance, as I'm, as I'm referring to her, because she come, to me, she comes out, she looks amazing, but it has that, for lack of a better way to describe my scattered, super drunk and high thoughts right now, like vintage Hollywood kind of drag, uh, kind of look. And I am living for it, believe that. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely dated, much like my fucking look. So, you know, no problems there. Then we have Utica Queen, uh, definitely the comedy queen of the season. Um, however, can't wait to see Rosé do something comedic, like her entrance, I thought was pretty fucking great. Uh, because the hardest part of comedy is timing, and I think she had it, uh, with the gag, with the tooth. But anyway, Utica... Mark, again, she's she's up there. She's probably number three on this team, maybe. It's really hard to say, but I do like her. I think uh, just in the, the first little brief glimpse we've got, we've seen kind of a good little range of her talent, so which is good. And then we had, uh, oh my god, I'm drawing a fucking blank. Kamora, Kamora, uh, very beautiful, but very. I bought this at H and M. Kind of look. Uh, and then we have Denali's second look. I think it was like something about a night look or something like that. I can't remember. Night and lace or tool or stole, whatever it's fucking called. I can't fucking remember. Give me a pass. It's a week ago and I'm drunk and high. Anyway, Denali, again, look, she's fucking great. Fucking beautiful. Fucking love it. I'd wear the fuck out of this with, you know, some modifications. Uh, then we have Joey J's second look. Oh, look. All natural hair. Again. Um, cute suit. Very kind of catwoman y. Very. Almost kind of matrixy in a sense, uh, although it's not latex. So points off for that. And then look at this. It's a you know, it's Hellraiser meets Moulin Rouge. It's it's Rosé by the way. Gorgeous outfit. Gorgeous, beautiful. Didn't get a full. Uh, didn't get a good screen grab of this one. I'll show you the bottom, but it's you know, it goes out more. Very very cool. Again, Moulin Rouge meets Hellraiser. Satin becomes satin. Or well, satin's a fabric. Uh, Satan. You know, basically. Fucking great. Beautiful. One of my favorite looks of the night for me. And then we have Tamisha with a tribute to the Queen of Halloween and the Queen of my heart since a very young age. Our Lord and Savior, Saint Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Um, I didn't, honestly, the hair, I thought, but I, I didn't kind of see it as a tribute until they actually said it. Uh, not knocking it. I think it, once I know that, I'm like, oh, it's genius. It's great. It's beautiful. Um, not something I would wear with, like, the hair. In terms, not the hair on the head, but it was full of hair. It was covered in hair. It was made of hair. 
Uh, so kind of icky points for me for that one. Uh, and then we have Kamora again. And again, by that, I, it's a double entendre for me because it also means like it looks like this is something she just got at H&M around in October. Uh, and I say H&M because that's the only store that I kind of I can think of off the top of my head right now. So, so there's their there's their looks, and then they had to do the same kind of thing. Oh wait, no, oh sorry, sorry Utica. And if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize even more. But great, cool ass fucking look. She comes out silly as hell in the first one, and then comes out looking like this. And it's like oh, you know, it's like oh, the little funny, you know, gestury character in the RPG all of a sudden became the main bad. So, really fucking cool. I liked it. Very Final Fantasy. Uh, early Final Fantasy. And then we have the Rain Runway uh, in the show and everything. They have to do a uh, dance routine, which we'll get to in a second. But look at, look how gorgeous Rue looks. I love this combo. That shade of orange with the blonde, the makeup, everything is so on point with this look. I love it. However, Rue is once again dethroned by the queen of this season, Michelle. M Michelle. Michelle Visage. And she hates green, and she hates it, and look how good she pulls it off. Gorge. Every fucking episode, she is, she's, she is the, you know, the top of the week. Every fucking week so far. Hair, makeup, everything. This is the season of Michelle Visage. Believe that. And green satin, green silk, can't tell, looks like silk, probably silk. Uh, judging by how it's, the more wrinkliness of it, where satin is little, you know, doesn't quite wrinkle as much as I say wrinkle you know what I mean has that kind of flutter I don't know what the fucking word is leave me alone uh, anyway Michelle Visage you are a goddess and we worship you uh, so they do the dance number cute little outfits same fucking hair um, everybody does I mean for the most part there was no like I mean aside from Kimura because uh, she's not a dancer which that like you know if I ever got on Drag Race if they did like you know it's Drag Race you know, season 2000, and it's like a robot roo, and we're all like, you know, living super long because of the coronavirus vaccine get, makes us immortal, uh, you know, then when I be on it, but the first challenge would be a dancing challenge, I'm out. I'm fucking out. I have the bad time and, and rhythm of a white boy and a white girl together. Double threat, motherfucker. The unrhythm nation right here, but... For the most part, everybody is good. Uh, there's no real big like blunders, uh, kind of like Candy Ho had. Is that her name, Candy Ho? I think so. Um, we'll see it together. <laughs> It'll all come together, hopefully for me. And also, I won't be quite as fucking drunk and high. Anyway, then we have the main one ways, and again, Denali, stunning, absolutely gorgeous, loving everything I'm seeing from her. And then Joey J with your goddamn hair again, and I believe Michelle makes a obviously because she is the saint of the season the right call in that you know like hey you know do your own drag for sure but on this show you got to show some diversity you got to be you know you got to show your range all that kind of fun shit so you know where you know you look it looked great the first time and the second time i was like oh you're doing that again but then three more times two more times put the brakes on joey J. you look great the first episode aside from the chicken feathers uh but i mean let's face it when you're a transvestite like me Everything's chicken feathers, um, for the most part. So anyway, then we have Kamora with hair taller than me on her head. Uh, gorgeous, very showgirl, very pageant-y, uh, very dolly, if that makes a sense. Not dolly parton, but dolly like a doll. Um, you know, very composed, very nice, gorgeous. And then we have Rosé, like an anime badass bitch coming out to like save the hero by like throwing him like or giving him a boost of power, whatever the fuck they do in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. There you go. There's your, you know, there's your RuPaul, you know, Rutsical, you know, Drag and Ball Z. Or something like that. I don't know. Dragon Ball LGBT. Uh, QI. I forget the other letters because I don't, I'm not so, so used to not saying them, at least out loud. Uh, Rose, fantastic. And Tamisha. Now, Ru, the, the panel considers this one of the greatest dresses to ever walk down the runway. It's gorgeous, and she made it, so. Fuck yeah. I mean, seriously, stand, I, I'd stand, but I don't feel like, I think I might fall over. Um, but Tamisha, gorgeous, but I wouldn't say one of the best. Again, to me, for my aesthetic, which is very, very specific. And then we have uh, Utica Queen. Again, 
very like Stevie Nicks, flowy, gorgeous, but, and you can't really see in this image, but the face paint was real, I say face paint, but the detail she had in her face makeup was really good, uh, at least from what I could see on the camera. So, uh, and that's it. And then it ends with, uh, let me get that off. So I can just stare at the camera and not stare at how gorgeous Denali is. Um, then it ended with, again, nobody being eliminated this week. That's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to find out who's the actual first one to go home. Um, but Denali and Rosé were the best of the week. Everybody else is safe, like I said. And they had to, you know, lip sync for, excuse me, not Legacy. I can't remember what they fucking, what Ru says it now. But again, like, I hate how they broke them up with the lip sync in episode one, but I like them kind of starting off as two teams, so it's almost like watching two different seasons at once. And then I, I've seen a lot of people online, I say a lot, a couple of people, articles that I read out of the very few that I read were like, this season doesn't have that spark, and it's just not as good. I disagree. Like, having like, you know, I'm, the problem is like remembering who's who between episodes because there's still so many. But I really like both groups, and it's an interesting dynamic the way they have it going on. So, again, don't like how they did it, but, you know, I like the splitting up. I'm for that. It's interesting. I like it. We're learning more about the girls faster. So this first person that's eliminated is going to hit hard. I mean, I can... I mean... I'm trying to think of everybody. Hold on, I got it up on another window. Uh, I would say the weakest ones, like, so far are Joey J, Kimura, uh... What's her name? I said Candy Ho. <laughs> I think that's somebody else. I'm sorry, Candy Ho. If I, that's a different drag queen. Candy Muse uh, was who I was saying. Probably her on that other side and along with maybe... No, not Olivia. I'm thinking of... Oh, Elliot with two Ts. Probably just because of him being voted out, her being voted out of one group into the other. You know, and I, I love her. I like I, I like what she's doing. I want her to stay at least to mid-season. Kind of like the Scarlet Envy of this season. Uh, but well, we'll see. But I think one of the ones I mentioned are probably, you know, based on what we've seen so far, they are the weakest links. So, but again, the ones to watch for me, Denali, Rosé for sure. And then the other side, Simone. I mean, Olivia's killing it, I think. You know, it's just, this season's so good. Oh, Got Milk. That's, that's what I was trying to remember. Too. Super awesome. Loving what I'm seeing from her. Uh, fan. Fucking-tastic. Loving it so far. So, we'll see what happens tomorrow night and this next episode, after this one for episode 4 of season 13, will hopefully air much sooner than this one did. And I won't have the goddamn problems I had last time. So, like, subscribe. It should be what's on this. No, it's got to get used to it. It's different. It's going to be on this side. You know, subscribe down here. Here's the video YouTube thinks you should watch. And I will need us next time when we talk more about RuPaul's Drag Race. So until then, everybody, stay frosty. Mm -hmm.